him is the light of the world in him is the power of matchable in him is the healing hallelujah he is the god that provides every good thing in him there is no regret those that serve him are rewarded in full he is the god of all gods and the king of all kings let the church lift up his name heavenly father just thank you right now Thank you, Jesus. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come in this house as it is in heaven. You that descended also ascended. You held captivity captives. So it shall be right now. And you release the gifts to men. God of vindication, power of all powers, King of glory, shine forth. The hour has come when the God of Elijah answered by fire. You are not called God for nothing. Answer your servant. I bless your name because you are good to me. I thank you because you are holy and altogether righteous. Without you, nothing is stable. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brothers and sisters, it is time to bow your heart to him. Hallelujah is the highest praise in heaven. When God speaks, the church says amen. And they shout hallelujah, which means praise the Lord. When you praise the Lord, heaven will look down on you. David said, even now that I'm old, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the offspring begging for bread. Lord, we take dominion of this territory. And we claim your blessings in the name of Jesus. Let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be pleasing before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. with me everyone the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 shepherd I shall not want you make me to lie down in green pastures you lead me beside still waters you restore my soul you lead me in the path of righteousness for your name's sake yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I'll fear no evil for thine are with me 
Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil. And my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So I dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And the church say amen. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. You may be seated. You may be seated. Uh, today, brothers, uh, we celebrate the women in our church. And to you women, I say happy Mother's Day. Brothers, today is the women's special day. And I know the Bible gave us an account. He who finds a woman, a wife, finds a good thing and obtains a blessings from the Lord. Because a man is never complete except a woman is attached to him. It is a blessing to have God who orchestrated all these things. And if we walk with him, everything works together for our good. If you are here in the church, you must have a Bible, so I would love to see. This is my Bible. I will read. I will obey. I will receive every promise. No man, no woman, no spirit, no power can take it from me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a club offering. Hallelujah. Brethren, brothers and sisters, that's what the word brethren means in the, old, in the King James Version. It is a beautiful thing to be in the presence of God. Amen? I'm going to talk today to the women. Amen? I'm going to talk to our women. We're going to talk about a what? A woman of repeat that after me a woman of a woman of God understand that the God I put there is capital G O D which means God the creator God the father Jesus the Christ Holy Ghost the power the three of them involved created a woman the bible said that out of the man she was carved out and i tell you the most beautiful thing on earth to look upon are the women the bible said that the sons of god the angel were here on assignment and they what saw the daughters of men they lost focus. Produce the anarchines, which are the head of the occult, head of the witchcraft, head of every opposition to God. So as a woman today, I want to encourage you that you were created divinely. The word divinely means for God's purpose only. If you drive through the tunnels of uh, Colorado, you will see the sign that said, you cannot enter here. They put a score X. So when God created a woman, he put a mark. He put himself right inside a woman. That even men who think they are in control don't even know anything until they meet a woman of God. Amen to that. Amen to that. Women, are you excited? Give the Lord a clap. I want just the women. Even girls too. Give the clap to the Lord. Amen. And all the ladies too. Clap to the Lord. Amen. You see, a woman is a man's companion. That's the primary goal. Amen to that. How do you say that, Pastor? The Bible said, and God brought Eve to him. 
<laughs> and Adam left God for Eve. He said, This surely is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. And two became one. When Adam moved from God to Eve, God stood alone. A woman is a companion to man, yet created by God for his purpose alone. We understood that Adam was very, very loyal to God until a woman came. Adam ignored the word of God because of the woman's demand. Today, Jesus has given the power back to the women that you can choose not to eat from the serpent and trust God. Then you have that anointing called a woman of God. I want to show you in the scripture as time goes on what a woman of God is all about. You know, when you read the Bible, you know about Ruth, powerful woman of God. You, you know also about Jezebel, a powerful woman of her God. You also know about Esther, a powerful woman of God. You also know about Hannah, a powerful woman of God. You know about Sarah, a powerful woman of God and gods. Amen. And you know about Rebecca and all the leaders. You know the women. It's written in the Bible, attached to every great man of the Bible. Zipporah, you know about Zipporah. Amen. In Genesis 2.22, a woman was created. Let's look at that scripture, then I'll walk you through. Genesis 2.22-24. He said then, the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Verse 23. And man said, this is now bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a what? Woman. Because she was taken out of man. Gender discrimination think that woman means weaker sex. That's not what he says. <laughs> Amen. Woman is not weaker sex. Woman came because she was taken from their what? Man. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I do not in I'm not training my daughters to be weaker than any man. I'm training them to grow godly, powerful, breadwinners, invest, inventors, investors, wives, mothers, amen, strong Christians. Amen to that. You see, verse 24 said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one what? Flesh. God do not intend division in marriage. A woman was so powerful that the man left his clan. He left his father and mother to go after a woman. Man, you better start thinking when you think you are Superman. Unless she's not determined for you. Amen to that. Let's look at a woman, verse chapter 3 and 20. As a mother of all living things. Genesis 3.20 And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Amen. Do you understand the homosexual agenda? To exterminate life from earth. <laughs> because when all the women marry women, there is no productivity. And in 100 years, the Bible gave us 80 years as the maximum lifespan. So I put it in science, 100 years, there will be no life. Let's assume everybody is homosexual. That's devil's agenda. It's a beautiful west to see a woman lesbian married to a woman. Proud about it. That's devil operating. 
shall never be heard, never be encouraged, never be seen, never be heard from men of God. They have taken over churches. It can never, it's an evil for a woman not to depend on men or walk with a man. I don't mean depend as depend to live, but to walk with a man for the propagation of God's intention. You can do it alone. But God said, two shall become one. Amen. Woman was also, a woman also goes through God's chastisement when they sin. Genesis 3.16. And that scripture said, to the woman God said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception in that you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. That's God. Amen. Feminism changing it now. Praise the Lord. And secondly, does not make you a woman a slave. So you should never tolerate abuse. Amen. If a man lay hand on you, call the police. Another punching bag. If anybody abuse you, report them to the authority. Why you yourself should try to avoid some names nobody wants to answer on earth. Like Jezebel. Don't you ever try to become one of them. Amen to that. You're going to try everything possible to avoid wickedness. Because the man is not thinking anymore depending on your thought. If you're a wicked man, you can ruin kingdoms. Because a woman also goes through their chastity with God. When they sin, God punish them. Therefore, this leaves to the men, their husbands. The duty to love them endlessly, regardless, at the same time, pray fervently. If the head is messed up, if somebody's head is messed up, the whole person is called a madman. Amen to that. I say, what well, somebody whose head is messed up is called a madman. They didn't say a mad head. So if there is no union as God intended it to be. The essence of womanhood is compromised. That scripture said, you, your desire shall be your husband's. So God intend every woman to be married. We are living in the stage in the age whereby people chose to keep their boyfriends for 30 years God wants you to be a wife and that's why you have a lot of unaccounted children all over the world who are hurting because nobody can produce their father oh amen and the world is going downwards God do not intend a woman to raise a child God intend a woman and a man to raise a child yes greed also has come when you have two or three children, you want to take them over because government will give you money. That is a symptom of Jezebel. Amen. God intend submission and love. It heals a lot of wounds. I'm not talking to you alone in the church. Also, I'm talking to the people watching us. Let us understand a woman's value should not be underestimated and as a woman you should not undersell yourself. You are great. The Bible call you the daughters of Zion. God call you the apple of his own eyes. You are called Eve, the mother of all living. You should never settle for less. Amen to that. Can I get a man from the women? You should never underestimate yourself. When God created you, man was sleeping. Only God witnessed a woman's creation. 
Only God knows what he has begat in this place. That a man will never go without looking back. It's only God. So that you can be taken care of properly. But when you compromise it, you become what? A carpet. I see very beautiful women hanging around with talks. Drug dealers, drug addicts. For what? Is that your life purpose? And God created you to be mothers of kings. Proverbs 31 talked about a mother addressing the son. A man not to go into alcohol or addiction. Because as a king he will be. He might compromise or destroy creation. Amen. Understand again. I'm saying this. I'm picking my word carefully. So that I don't want to offend anybody. At the same time I want you to have the power of encouragement from this message. That when you live here, something will happen to you. Amen to that. Maybe you don't want to, you don't care about you. Things have bent you so much that you don't even care about how you look. You better go, go back to looking good. Amen. Don't you ever look less than beauty because that's what God created. Your trouble is nothing to God. For those who don't know God, that's the reason. It's over your head. And for those who know God, you can only do one prayer and it shall be done. I will show you in a minute. Amen. Understand again, only God can contain a woman. That is why he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains the blessings from the Lord. If you find a wife, you find a good thing. Many people that are going through marital problems knows how terrible a man will feel. And many women that are going through marital abuse know how terrible it feels. Because in both extremes, God is taken out of the equation. But let us bring God back into our lives. And things will work together for good. Amen to that. You know, there are pros and cons. The Bible said in Proverbs 9.13 that clamorous, foolish women are empty-headed. So do not be empty headed by being a foolish woman. Amen to that. Amen to that. God did not create an empty headed woman. God created a gem in a woman that a man lost his father to the woman. Amen. So do not sell for less. It's a crime to sell yourself for less. My daughters, I raise you to be lionesses in the jungle. That you're going to grow mighty women of God. And God will bless you. That you marry kings and heads of state. And they, you will change the nation. That God will be called into the society for the blessing of God. Because I raise you up in the world of the Lord. And you will never depart from it because every form of evil will reject our children in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Gracious women, the Bible said in Proverbs eleven sixteen, retains their honor. If you want to retain your honor, you're going to be gracious. Gracious is a derivative from the word grace. It is by grace we are saved, not of works, neither any man should boast. So your beauty is a grace of God. Your position is a grace of God. Your, your intelligence is a grace of God. Your, 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 your rank is a grace of God. So graciously, you give grace so that your honor will be retained. Honor is not paid by force. You're going to respect me. No, it's not done that way. You earn it by giving it. Am I talking to the women? Let the women clap to the Lord here tonight. Amen to that. So gracious women retains their honor. I want you mothers of the church to be gracious. Daughters of the church to be gracious. Even the babies in the womb to be gracious. Because grace is an unmerited favor. You might want to have an exchange so that someone can get off your hook. No, grace gave it all before anything. Grace gave it and turned and walked away. Amen to that. So don't stand your ground. Grace life matters also. Amen. Amen. 
Proverbs 11, 22 also said that lovely women without discretion are like jewels in a swine's snout. Amen. Lovely women without discretion. A foolish woman is like a jewel on the neck of a swine. That's what God is saying. So you could be as beautiful as you are. All you can present is a drug dealer as a boyfriend or husband. He will torment you. Because as he sell to the junkies, he will also marry them. Amen. Without discretion, you settle for less. Because age is over you. Says who? Did you not know about Abigail? Who exposed evil and prophesied her next married husband? God fulfilled her word and the husband came. She didn't say I was 60 years old. You've got to have some common sense, discretion, discernment, wisdom, understanding. Remember, God created you for his purpose. Amen. God created a man to walk and created you to hold him life in you. Amen. So a woman sees God more than a man because a man is out there walking. A woman of God should be a woman that pray and talk to their God night and day for the kingdom to run well, the family to run well, the children to run well, the church to run well. Not a woman without discretion that is all about yourself. I'm glad my daughters are hearing this message from their daddy. I always tell them, I said, we don't marry to go home. You marry to your husband one time, I bless him, the blessing of Abraham, you're going to marry him forever. If you mess up and call me, when I come, I'll give you a slap on your face because that's not what I taught you. Wise women, Proverbs 14.1, build substantial homes. Look at the homes of very great pastors. Pastor Peter, Pastor Ezekiel, Pastor Jeremiah, Pastor this. Their, their mother is a godly woman because Peter cannot be Peter without a godly woman that knows that the Bible have a name Peter. Amen. Hallelujah. So as a woman, when you find such a name, take them to God. The prayer is simple. Lord, I didn't give him Peter. God, if Peter is not living right, Bring punish him. Answer clock has closed. So a godly woman build a substantial home. When a home is substantial, it's a progressive home. A man. You don't know. Don't tell me you don't need a man. God created a man to walk the field. So he's a bad guy. He can deal and treat the children to not to blaspheme. Trust me. In my tribe, they say that a child, a woman raised with a dog, a woman raised with eat um, uh, 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 egg for breakfast. So there is a reason a father is involved. A woman, I endure you to give that man his little position. To do the little thing he want to do because these children want to settle for less. Who amongst you want to have money without going to work? Every one of us. So are the women. They don't. They, the children don't want anybody to tell them to turn the TV. The mother remember the pain nine months. She can't do it. Let the man do it. So a woman must be submissive to the husband. That's what the Bible say. And the husband is compelled. To love that woman. No matter how terrible they are. Paul said if they are unbelieving. Love them. If they go by their own power. Also let them go. But don't sign the certificate of divorce. Because it's an act of wickedness. And uh, uh, ungraceful. Toler intolerance. Amen. Allow them. Because they are part of the cross. You carry as a man. Amen. Jesus said, take your cross and follow me. How many of you came to church with cross today? 
No, you didn't come with one. You came, the cross you're carrying is the Lord. How to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Tolerate your wife that is unbelieving. Yes, stay in the same roof. Amen. And pray for your, your son that is prodigal or daughter that is prodigal. Those are the crosses. Jesus said, carry it and follow me. Hallelujah. Because they are the burden. By the time you find Jesus, then you cast your burden onto Jesus. You lay your wife, your husband, your son, your daughter at the foot of the cross. That's what the Bible said. If anyone confess Christ as Lord and Savior, he is saved and his household by the time you drop them jesus will be protecting them from evil because if they hurt you hurt until the time of accountability when every man will answer for themselves hallelujah god jesus wasn't saying that they are saved that they are going to heaven because of you no they will come to an age and also claim jesus as lord and savior and join you in heaven amen to that praise the lord hi my name is Joyce Okereke of the Living Word Ministries here in Evanston. And we are a new, exciting and growing ministries in your area. We would love for you to join us every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. You know, the Lord loves you just the way you are, and we do too. Call us or visit our website. We can't wait to see you. God bless you. troublemakers it is the name of the husband or your city or your kingdom that is in peril it's the name of your church that is in peril such women do not represent their husband I do not admire any contentious woman it's evil before God a brawling woman are not easy to live with Bible said Proverb 21 9 a brawling woman troublemaker you pick him quarrel amen Jezebel was a troublemaker she won everything for herself yet worshiping a dead God understand that angry women are never good company these are qualifications I'm not stereotyping now. You know, people say these people are angry women. That's not true. I've seen a more beautiful people that are happy inside and out. But for a woman to be angry, I'm going to show you what happens in the first Samuel. Amen. Do not be an angry woman. Let me explain to you this. If anything can manipulate you, or anything can deceive you, they can also manipulate you. God do not intend anger. Because anger destroys the spirit. So when somebody say you're ugly, fall down and start laughing. Tell them, is that all you got? Psychology 101 told me it's a reversal arrow. Amen. Because if you accept that you're ugly, they will prize you for a penny. That I've, I know men. Men talk down what they want. So that they don't face the challenge. Nobody is ugly in this world. Especially women I've never seen. Even when you look on the TV or the people born today, my God, they have the faces of angels. It's been going on there. Look at beautiful women all over. So you, you are not an angry creature. You shall not accept it. Anger is a demon. When a woman is angry, it's demon possession. You need to love it out. Because God created joy. That's why the man spotted in the first place and changed his party. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk to adulterous women. Women with 16 husbands. The Bible says, Proverbs 30, 20, that the adulterous women can be self-righteous. Amen. God knows who you are. When you are adulterous, that means you are keeping more than your husband. It's 
should never happen. Loose women also, Ecclesiastes says in, in 726, loose women are like snares and nets. You know what happened in the book of Proverbs? The woman said, come my son, come in, my husband is traveled. God said, don't even go, that's a death trap, don't go. Many men have died because of such things. I do not intend godly women to be a loose woman. You are beautiful. You should have known that line, first of all, that you are. That's not a line to sell yourself for nothing in the hand of a pimp or those crazy juggernauts. You are beautiful from the beginning. I tell my daughters every day, beauty is not a line a man should use to marry you. And if they tell you the reason they love you, run. They don't love you because they should love you for no reason. I'm not saying you shouldn't have friends. Give them visa to Jerusalem, but that Zion, they should not enter there. Before a man should take you, make sure they do the right thing for you. Don't sell for nothing. Look at it. You know, check the, I, 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 I do research a lot. Many older women look more healthier and younger than our youth today. Because they have so abused their bodies. That they look older than a wretched witch in the forest. Every manner of lifestyle. Facebook has come help them. I thought it's a fashion for a woman to cover up well. Let the man investigate you. Let the man seek you. Amen. Vaseline helps men. You show your body. Why do they need to marry a woman anyway? They don't. You give them what they want. If I have a milk, why should I buy a cow? You want me to clean up the boo boo? Man? No, no. Get the milk. Easy. So don't sell for less. There are many marriages taking place. When a woman makes herself priceless, men talk. They will sleep with 100 women. They are looking for a virgin to marry. <laughs> Amen. So you should be the virgin they are looking for. Amen to that. They are drunk. Oh, have you seen X? They are looking for wife. Oh, I go to A. You should be the one they seek for. Constant. Amen. Are you for say, oh yeah, I'm for hire. Twenty-four karat is what I want. If not, take your knucklehead and get away from here. Amen. Because I cannot settle for less. They will pass the story amongst the men. And the man who is confident will take a hundred karat coming. I heard you not settling. I want this for myself. Amen. And mothers will say, Oh, have you seen the daughter of that one? She turned away some crazy men away. She said she want to get married. My son, that's the woman we're going to marry. Pim. These are characters and choices one has to make. And it's terrible when people are in between. Hypocrites, dressed like good women, are devil inside. God knows it because he never will walk. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain the blessings from the Lord. So if you are a pretender, it's not going to work. Why? God is not with you and human beings are not with you. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. Every man wants a crown. Whether king or prince or citizen wants a crown. Let us look at uh, a godly woman. Open your Bible to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Amen. I'm going to start with that woman because her prayer changed the dynamics of Christianity. Hannah was her name. She was a woman of God and got married but could not have a child. 
She never quit going to church. She did not seek the witch doctor to give her a baby. She held on to the torment of the women that have their own children who laughs at her because she does not have her own children. Some of you are being laughed at because of what you don't have. But look your eye on God because you will have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen to that. I say you are being mocked by people because of what you don't have. Turn your eye unto Jesus because he must fulfill it for you in the name of Jesus but let me remind you you must be born again first and then you will hold God on his garment until his blessing comes unto you amen to that you don't win a battle without God remember he created you for him alone so whatever a woman need you must take it from God alone I mean the God of heaven not the God created by men let me get a praise in the house. Hallelujah. That, 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 that scripture said in, in, in first Samuel, I'm just going to take some points I want. In verse, uh, verse 6 there, he said, And her rivals also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord has closed her womb. Amen to that. Amen. She's a woman of God, but the Lord closed her womb. Sometimes God do that so that it, God knows many people. Actually, who got blessing of God made idol out of blessing of God. Sometimes God make a woman not to get married, make a woman not to have a child, make a woman not to, because God knows their heart. I tell you, many women that got married turned marriage into what? Vacation. Church, no more. The pastor saw them the last day. They say, I love you for you may kiss the bride. After that, it was vacation and job out of city moving away the next time you heard of them is in divorce court so like Hannah God could not let her conceive the enemy didn't know that to them they thought that her womb was missing when she was created so they provoked her verse 7 says so it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked that she provoked her therefore she wept and did not eat a godly woman should be able to know when to speak to God she will take advantage of every opportunity that she have in the house of the Lord if you are blessed to have something doing in the house of the Lord do it effectively amen that's what made Esther the queen. She had opportunity to serve God. And she did it effectively. If you go to verse 11. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts. Can every woman here read that verse with me? Go. O Lord of hosts. If you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servant, but will give your maid servant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. I expected every one of you, when he said a male child, some of you have grandchildren, so you don't need any child anymore. You put what you need. God, if you are able to take away this stem cell, this cancer cell, this uh, 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 bone po osteoporosis cell, if you can take away this trouble within me or this disease or that, I will praise you in your house. Amen. That's how vows are made. Amen. So, so, so when you look at that, she made a vow. Many people don't even know what vow is. Vow is when a man promised God something in exchange for a covenant. Amen. When a man said, if you give me a child, Lord, I will testify in the house of the Lord. That is a vow. People who did that received what they asked for. I'm telling you, I, 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 this is 
Many years I've been in the ministry now to know that people God used me to bless. They never showed up. I think one was so funny. God used us to give a house to a family of the church and the wife, the next Sunday said, oh my goodness, this house is so beautiful that we, I don't think we, I can make it to church again. And that word, we all laughed. And that was it. I know all the people, God healed them of blood problem, prostate problem, back problem, stone, kidney stone problem. I don't ask for that because I know people done. But God spoke to me and said, this will be taken care of. So she said, oh Lord of hosts, the word, that prayer is so powerful. Oh Lord of hosts, the commander of heaven and earth. That's what the Lord of hosts means. If you will, the word if is Matthew 6, 9 to 10 to 11 to 13. Let the will of God be done. If you will, God, he's, she's not doubting God. But he's saying, God, let it be your will done to me. That I will receive this thing. I, you can remove this laughter from people by giving me the impossible child. Amen. In verse 12, he said, And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli, the pastor, watched her mouth. Remember, in a time of celebration, anything happens. Amen to that. Anything can happen. People are weighing orders. So Eli was part of the team. He said, is she drunk? She said, no, I'm not drunk. I'm pleading my case with the Lord as you continue looking at that scripture. Amen to that. Sometimes people might misunderstand your worship. Sometimes people might understand the pattern of your prayer. But it is you as a woman that we continue marching in the way of the Lord. Let me tell you, many things are trusted in the hand of a woman. A good wife, a good mother, a good leader, a, a, a good teacher. In many ways, it's women. You are the mother of life. So you don't give out life without containing the life. Amen to that. Amen to that. So when Hannah made this prayer, God responded to her. Because the next line was saying, verse 13, Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. When you are moving night and day, praying for that breakthrough, people might think you are coming after a man. They will say, oh, it's because of that man she go to that church. Please, many people have left a living church, God send them. Don't listen to any voice, including the preacher. You are here for God, women of God. Amen to that. I say you are here for your God, women of God. Let me get amen to that. Don't let anyone talk you out of your relationship with your God. Hannah answered, verse 15, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. That's a woman of God. She came to church to pour her soul. She was not carried away by the festivity, by the pizza or the coffee or the pop or the gossip. She came primarily to focus on God, focus on God and what she can get from her God. Because God is not easy to come by. Living church is not easy to come by. If you have an opportunity, take all you can. That's what the Bible says. Do not waste your time on fraternity of the church. Come and worship and fill your bag and go home so that you will testify. She said, I wasn't drunk. I'm not a drunkard. I'm not a woman of alcohol. I, I, I am broken in my heart. And I know God can solve my problem. How can have you committed your children to God? You used to do it six times a, day, a week. All of a sudden you are doing it once. It, it, was it? Once a week that brought you the children in the first place? 
It was six times a week. You ought to add seven times to keep it. Many people run away when God bless them. When God bless you, you need to come to God the more, amen. Because the enemy will not rip it apart. When you are blessed of God, become a friend of God. So that God will protect his blessings in your life. Before we receive and walk away, knowing that the enemy will come like a flood. Hallelujah. And when he comes, oh God, why? Why, why God? God has nothing to do with it. It's a choice a person makes. The misery of a woman is a choice she makes because he who find a wife finds a good thing the man knows when they find a good thing so do not change being bad or impressing the man be who you are the prophet of god married a prostitute he was proud of her that she ran back to her people and god said go take money and pay them watch she owed the man and take your wife back man is easy to fulfill a man is very easy to fulfill a woman need not to be complex this woman said i wasn't drunk master with all due respect i'm not drinking Besides, why should you even bring you see how corrupt the old church was or religion why do you want to bring alcohol in the church in the first place amen do you see why jesus came because they were drinking alcohol in the church <laughs> So Jesus came to give us the real alcohol from heaven, the Holy Spirit. So that when you are drunk in the Holy Spirit, you are not afraid of their faces. You deposit as you are given. Brothers and sisters, he continues. He said, do not consider verse 16. You may serve a wicked what? woman. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken until now. The Bible said that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. And he who knows the spirit, the, the, the mind of the spirit, will answer. Amen. That if you have desire through God, it shall be met. All the desire, the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. Amen. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous woman runs to him, and they are saved. Amen. Understand that's what happened to Hannah. If you continue, then Eli said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant you petition which you have asked of him. When she vindicated herself. The priest agreed with her. Amen. Amen. That is called priestly blessing. Many people do not acknowledge their head of their church. Amen. I've ministered a message and you see people get out and walk because I made a correction. I started laughing. God, what a foolishness is that. I correct somebody, then they don't want to come to church because to them, if they don't sing, heaven will not open. I start laughing because such a foolishness. You listen to me. You need to, to agree for difficult situation to shift. Do I have a witness in the house? Give the Lord a praise. When two shall agree by touching something, each shall establish. You cannot do it alone. If I can do it alone, God will not say plant a church. No. He knows that a church planted is people that will feel it. Even devil will also come as a member. I'm not seminary trained. I am Holy Ghost trained. My word have never fell. And my God have never fell. Everyone that enter receives something. Because God is with us here. Amen to that. I'm not saying I'm a dummy. I will, I'm well educated on my rank. But the fact is that all those things are nothing. Because now we are running by grace. We are running by the Holy Spirit. Not by power, nor by might. No, it's by the Spirit, says the Lord. That if we agree with Him, if we abide in Him, and His word abide in us, we can ask whatever we demand, and it shall be done unto us. He is a vine, and we are the branches. Remember, without a branch, without a vine, the branch cannot bear no fruit. 
So that should tell us to humble ourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that He will exalt us in due time. Many people want to be exalted without humility. It's impossible to do that. You gotta be humbled before you exalted, because pride comes before a fall and a humble spirit. Hallelujah! We be exalted. Hallelujah! Understand, the man of God said, "Go, God have granted you." Let's look at the next line. And she said, Let your maid servant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate. And her face was no longer what? Sad. Prayer can take away those rudiments of sadness. Because sadness, anywhere sadness or anger is, devil is at the door. It's like I, we did the washing of feet last Sunday. Devil set up a loose on the head. I said, I have no weapon against you but the blood of Jesus. Devil and your demons in the name of Jesus. I bind them. Hallelujah. Because I, you can't find nothing against me. Take it to heaven. I win. Bring it on earth. I win. I'm vindicated. Your church is vindicated. You are vindicated as a woman of God. No weapon formed against you that shall prosper. Let us look at verse 19. That early, he said, they rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their houses at Ramah. On, and Eli, Elkanah, on, knew praise. Hannah, his wife. Hallelujah. And the Lord did what? Remembered 